by asking him how he can live up to all the hopes that his supporters have. Mr. Obi, thank you so much for being with us. You are certainly the most popular presidential candidate in Nigeria right now among young people. There is just so much momentum behind you. But here's the problem. Nigerians are used to being disappointed by their leaders. And when you think about some of the problems that are facing the country right now, they're systemic. I'm talking about corruption, I'm talking about oil theft, I'm talking about insecurity, I'm talking about the fiscal hole that Nigeria is in right now. Can all of that really be solved by one person? Well, if you have a leader that is competent, have the capacity and commitment to start dealing with it, you're not going to solve it overnight. But there will be a clear, visible, measurable attempt to deal with it. And they're not, there are things that are solvable. There are things that can be dealt with decisively. But you have to have a, a leader that, if you look at what he's been able to do in the past, you can say yes. If indeed you do become Nigeria's next problem. president. Um, Nigeria, as you know, is broke. It is barely able to service its debt. It spends so much more than it earns. What are your plans? Just from a concrete perspective, what are your plans to take Nigeria's economy off of life support? Well, a variety of things. One is that you have to deal decisively with the issue of security. It's impacting negatively on your economy today. You have to deal with it head on. Because you have to get your farmers to go back to farm and start ensuring that the vast land of the north are invested and cultivated on. You have to start pulling people out of poverty as quickly as possible. You have to reduce aggressively the cost of governance and they will issue of corruption. Anyone who knows anything about Nigeria knows that it has this embarrassing reputation of despite the fact that it is Africa's largest oil producer, it imports refined fuel. What is your plan for transforming Nigeria's economy from a consumption economy to a production economy? Let me use this to avoid it for example. But there will be a clear, visible, measurable attempt to deal with it. And they're not, they're things that are solvable. They're things that can be dealt with decisively. But you have to have a, a leader that, if you look at what he's been able to do in the past, you can say yes. If indeed you do become Nigeria's next problem. president. Um, Nigeria, as you know, is broke. It is barely able to service its debt. It spends so much more than it earns. What are your plans, just from a concrete perspective, what are your plans to take Nigeria's economy off of life support? Well, a variety of things. One is that you have to deal decisively with the issue of security. It's impacting negatively on your economy today. You have to deal with it head on, because you have to get your farmers to go back to farm and start ensuring that the vast land of the north are invested and cultivated on. You have to start pulling people out of poverty as quickly as possible. You have to reduce aggressively the cost of governance and deal with issue of corruption. Anyone who knows anything about Nigeria knows that it has this embarrassing reputation of despite the fact that it is Africa's largest oil producer, it imports refined fuel. What is your plan for transforming Nigeria's economy from a consumption economy to a production economy? Let me use this to avoid, for example, there's no reason why our refineries cannot work. There's no reason why we should not encourage private sector to build refineries and operate them. And they're not rocket science. It can be done as quickly as possible. You can use today precise 
to remove the first subsidy, use the resources to support a, a critical areas of production from critical infrastructure to education to supporting investment in refinery, which will be, like I said, done within a shortest possible time. A lot of Nigerian presidents have come in and talked about revitalizing the manufacturing sector, investing in refineries, but change, as you know, has been very, very slow. Um, why is it going to be different with, with you? And what would you say were the biggest hurdles in making sure that all of the things that you've just listed come to pass? Well, what people need to do is to go and look at what I promised as a state governor when I said I'm going to turn around education, health, pull people out of poverty, bring sanity and civility in governance in Anambra State, whether that happened or not. When I said we're going to save money, did we do that? I want to talk about one of the other sort of major issues that Nigeria is dealing with, grappling with right now, and that is, of course, violence and insecurity. You can barely travel from one part of Nigeria to another without fearing for your life. And I'm talking about kidnapping, I'm talking about banditry, I'm talking about terrorism, I'm talking about Boko Haram. What is your plan for that? You know, I just said that initially that what we need to first set on is issue of security. Because unless you have security, the farmers can't go back, you can't attract investment, nobody will ever want to go to an insecure place. And you can deal with that. There's so many you need to do a lot of work, reorganize your security architecture, ensure that there's multi-level policing. Issue of state police has to be decisively dealt with. There's so many things you need to do. You need to bring in more personnel into the security system, equip them properly, ensure that they are properly motivated to deal with the issue of security because they need it is the most important thing Nigeria needs today. As you know, you and I are both Nigerian, we're both Igbos, we're both from southeastern Nigeria. Um, Nigeria is a very hard country to hold together. You've got 200 million people, so many different tribes, so many different competing interests and ideas. And um, when you think about the fact that, you know, you're from the southeast, how easy is it going to be to rally Nigerians perhaps from the north behind you. That's got to be on your mind. That is what it was yesterday. Another problem. Because we have been able to elect people based on ethnicity, religion, my tongue, connection, or one form of bias or the other which brought us to where we are, or structure which always says structure of criminality, that is what we, we want to dismantle now and ensure that the next election is based on character, capacity, competence, commitment to do the right thing. Nigeria is now not just in a physical mess, it is at The people in the north don't have a secure place. They don't have good roads. They don't have, they don't buy bread cheaper than people in the south. So is the people in the south. So all you hear about the ethnicity, religion, connection, my tone, is any conspiracy to keep Nigeria underdeveloped, but now we've reached the edge. We can no longer continue this way. Mr. Obi, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you.